Lecture six begins. Lecture six deals with the part with the part of religion. First, the relation between the pre and the post university of two colliding spheres is described. Second, the method finding a collision partner or collision counterpart are explained. The method uh, classified into is a method is classified into the deterministic method and stochastic method. Finally, an example of calculation is shown. The collision model used in this lecture is so-called the hard sphere model. Let's consider the two spherical particles collide. In this analysis, translational velocity v and angular velocity omega are considered. Subscript one and two means the particle considered. The superscript zero means the collision velocity. Post collision velocity that has no superscript. The equation used for this analysis are the impossible equation shown in the yellow frame. The radius part one and two are R1 and R2 respectively. The impossible equation indicates that difference in momentum before and after the collision is equal to the impasse acting on the particle. The difference in the angle of momentum is equal to the moment after the collision. The momentum is the product of mass and velocity. The angular momentum is the product of moment of inertia i and angular velocity. The vector n is the unit vector drawn from the contact point to the direction to the path to gravity center. Large j is the impulsive force vector which part to exert on part one. The letter i is the moment of inertia. The Coulomb's friction law is applied to the friction force. When the restitution coefficient e and friction coefficient mu are given, the force collision velocity can be solved using the impossible equation. This slide shows the result. In this lecture, I will omit the derivation of this equation and show only the final result in the yellow frames. As in the case of part to wall collision, the solution formulas are different depending on whether the two particles continue to slide during the collision period or stop sliding in the middle. The left yellow frame corresponds to the case where the particles continue to slide, and right frame corresponds to the case where the particles stop sliding in the middle of the collision period. Several variables appearing in the result are defined below the yellow frames. In the, in the previous slide, the relation between pre and post velocity are shown, but we have a difficult problem. When an enormous number of particles move with different position and direction, it is not easy to find collision pairs and collision moment. In principle, it might be possible to find set pairs and collision moment from the instantaneous distance between the nearby particles. If you try to find the pairs and collision moment in that way, the time step of integration must be extremely small. Such calculation is unrealistic. <clears throat> There is an idea to solve this problem. The idea is called the principle of separation. This idea was invented in numerical analysis of molecular motion. In principle, um, the principle of separation is that if the time spec delta t for the trajectory calculation is small enough compared with the mean free time, the collision detection and trajectory calculation can be separated. In free time is the, the average time it takes for a particle 
to collide with another particle in the next collision if we use the principle of separation. The collision detection can be done with the moderate time step. The method of the principle of separation is classified into two kinds. The one is deterministic method and the other is stochastic method. Direct simulation Monte Carlo represents the st stochastic method. Usually, direct simulation Monte Carlo is called shortly the SMC. Trajectories of particles are calculated in the deterministic method. The stochastic method calculates the trajectory of the only sample particles. Regarding the DSMC, the method developed by Professor Nambu will be explained. First, I will explain the deterministic method. Let's consider the relative motion of two particles. Assume that the right particle is stationary and the left particle moves near the right particle at the Model, uh, at the relative velocity, left particle is particle one, and the right particle is particle two. The radius part one and part two are R one and R two respectively. At time t, the line vector drawn from part two center to part one center is R t. Note that in this lecture. The alphabet letter small r always mean vector except for the radius r1 and r2. At time t plus delta t, particle moves to the point shown by the dotted circle. The line vector drawn from the position of particle one center at time t to the position at time t plus delta t is expressed by R t plus delta t minus R t. In the case of this figure, part one moves away from part two, and so it does not collide with part two. Next, let's consider the lower case. If part one did not collide with part two, part one went to the point shown by the red dotted circle at time t plus delta t. In the lower case, part one collides with part two. The position of part one, the moment of collision is shown by the black dotted circle. The line vector drawn from the original position of part one to the position of black dot cycle can be expressed by k times the vector r t plus delta t minus r t. At the moment of collision, the vector drawn from part to part one become the sum of the RT plus K times the difference of RT plus delta T minus RT. This sum is equal to the sum of the radius R1 plus R2, as shown in the second yellow frame. The equation in the second yellow frame is the collision discriminant. This equation is quadratic equation K. If the solution k has a value between 0 and 1, part 1 and part 2 are determined to collide. Otherwise, two parts do not collide. Next, I will explain stochastic method DSMC. The stochastic method is far more powerful than the deterministic method. <coughs> Here one shows a group of 
particles that really exist in the field. The total number of particles is 42. All the particles are distributed at random and have different velocity vectors. The symbol small n stands for the number density. In DSMC, trajectory, uh, trajectory calculations were made only for sample particles, not for real existing particles. The number of sample particles large n is much less than the total particles. In figure two, the number of sample particles n is only six, that is black particle, red particle, red, pink, yellow, and green particle. Please note that such small numbers of 42 and six are assumed here for the convenience of simplified explanation. In the practical, practical DSMC, the number of sample particles n is much more than six, say, thousand or more. The distribution of sample particles is sparse compared with the distribution shown in the upper left figure. In order, in order to create a state similar to real particles, we consider the particles belong to one sample are distributed in space at random with a number density of nj. nj is equal to small n over large n. In this case, nj is seven. First, we make the particle of red sample, red sample group dispute with the number density seven. Next, black and gray, green, pink, and yellow. Particles of the same group have the same velocity vector that is, all the red particles have the same velocity vector. All the black particles have the same velocity vector, and so on. In DSMC, figure one is replaced with figure three. The number density in figure one and figure three are equal. Trajectory calculation is made only for large N sample particles. The presence of other invisible particles is used to calculate collision probability. Figure one and figure three are similar. The big difference in figure one and figure three is that relative velocity between two groups of sample particles is fixed. Under that condition, Collision probability can be calculated. The derivation of the collision probability is explained in the next slide. From now, I will explain the procedure of calculating the collision probability. First, note that one sample particle represents a large number of invisible particles that have the same velocity but are disputed randomly in space. Focusing on the red sample particle I, let's consider the collision between this particle and the black sample particle J. Only sample particles are displayed in the calculation result. However, when dealing with the collision with sample particle J, the presence of many invisible particles belonging to the sample particle group J must be considered. If the sample particle I invariably collide with any of the other, sample, uh, other particles in the field, then the probability of the sample particle I colliding with, colliding with any of the other particles is one. In that case, all the sample particles have the equal chance of colliding with the particle I. 
therefore the value obtained by dividing the total probability one by the number of n is given to each sample particle that is one over n is the probability of collision with a simple sample particle i the sum of the collision probability assigned to each sample particle is one in reality a real uh, red sample particle i does not always collide with other particles therefore the probability of collision that the red sample particle i collide with black particle group j is less than one over n the black sample particle j is disputed with the number density mj equal to small n over large n all the particles belonging to the group J have the same velocity Vj. This situation is the same as the case where the red particle, red sample particle I approaches the black sample particle J with a relative velocity Gij equal to Vi minus Vj. This situation is shown in this figure. A red sample particle, red particle moves gij delta t in time t while the black particles are stationary consider the cylinder colored blue the radius of the cylinder is the diameter of the particle the area of the collision cross section large s is equal to pi times d square the length of the cylinder is gij delta t then the volume of the cylinder is s times gij times delta t let's count the number of particles in this cylinder <clears throat> that number is given by product of the number density mj and volume n volume j v this number is regarded as the collision probability of particle i colliding with particle j per time t delta t. This number or probability is don don donated by pij as shown in the yellow frame. I will repeat the explanation spoken before. If the sample particle i invariably uh, or hundred percent collide with one of the particles in the field, the collision probability probability of that case is one. I will show the collision probability using the line. The line length one means the total probability. In that case. The Korean probability that the sample particle I collide in fairly with one of the particles represented by sample particle J is one over N. Because each sample particle has equal possibility to collide with the sample particle I. Real sample as real Korean probability of the particle I colliding with any of the sample particle J sample group J is expressed in the previous slide using the symbol PIJ. PIJ is shown by the red line. The length of PIJ is smaller than the length of one over N. <clears throat> so here, I will explain the algorithm of the SMC. Please imagine that you are calculating the trajectory of the sample particle I step by step for considering the fluid and gravitational forces. At every step, you need to determine if the sample particle I collide with another particle. This decision is based on the collision probability, not on the trajectory. <clears throat> for that purpose, the same diagram as in the previous slide is shown. 
In this diagram, the collision probability of the sample particle I against other particles are shown by the red line. Expression of each collision probability is shown below. And S is the number density of each sample particle. D is small d is a twice the particle radius R. Gig, Gij is the relative velocity Vi minus Vj. Procedure of decision has two steps. In the first step, the candidate of collision partner is selected by using random number large r. Large j is the sample particle number, which is the candidate of collision partner. Second step is determine whether the collision occurs or not. If the random number r drops in the red line, the sample particle i collide with a particle represented by the sample particle j. As the velocity vi and vj are known, post collision velocity can be calculated by the equation we lie before. If R, random number R, does not drop in the red line, the part does not collide. The advantage of this method is that using only one random number, you can choose a collision partner and determine whether or not two parts collide. Trajectory calculation of the sample particle is carried out while making the collision judgment for each step. I tried to give you an image of such calculation. Note, notice one sample particle I. This part is moving with many invisible particles. First, generate a random number and see where this random number fit in the probability diagram. This random number drops in the section of J and so the particle belonging to the group J is the candidate of the collision partner. Look closely at the drop point and you find the point is out of the PIJ, se PIJ section. That's the particle I is determined not to collide. The equation of particle motion is integrated one final step, taking into account the free force and gravity force, and the particle moved to the next location. Again, the possibility of collision is investigated using the random number. The candidate for the collision partner this time is particle belonging to group B, group two. The random number drop in the red line and thus the particle I collide with the, with the particle group two. The post collision velocity is calculated from the velocity of group two and particle I. The direction of the particle motion change largely. Yeah. The particle equation of motion is integrated and the particle moved to the next location. The no next uh, location or position, a random number is generated again and the same procedure repeated. Next, next, and next. So, so on. <clears throat> Let's compare the deterministic method and Stochastic method. Tragically, the all particles are calculated in the deterministic method. Collision detection is based on trajectory. <clears throat> in the stochastic method, the trajectory of the trajectory calculation is made only for the sample particles. 
collision detection is based on the collision probability. The collision partner is invisible. If a sample part is determined to collide, the post collision velocity is calculated from the solution of the impulse equation. To see the result, we flow to see the the resulted flow pattern of particles. Result of sample particles are sufficient in general. In this lecture, the number of sample particles is extremely small for convenience of explanation. To see the flow pattern of particles, the number of sample particles should be much larger than the example of this present lecture. The two-way two-way calculation of the particle free multi-phase law. It is necessary to quantitatively evaluate the reaction force of particle motion to the fluid. In that case, the effect of the particle on the fluid is calculated by considering the ratio between the number of sample particles and the real number of particles. Here, I'd like to speak about the discovery in other areas that inspired us. In 1997, the US NASA and European Space Agency, ESA, launched a space probe named Cassini. Cassini sent many images from space that supply the world. The upper photo is an actual photo and the lower one is imaginary one. Until then, the Saturn ring was thought to be one. But it was found there are multiple rings. Triggered by that discovery, the mechanism that formed the asteroid ring became a hot topic in the field of astrophysics and the theory that an elastic collision between particles is the mechanism of ring formation began to emerge. Mm. My group in Oscar University was doing the medical simulation considering particle to particle collision in the reactor of solid gas two phase four. Before that simulation, we conducted a preliminary simulation using the SNC. I would like to show a result of that preliminary work. We observed that what happened when particles repeat in elastic collision under the condition of no gravity and no gas. Many small points in this figure are sample particles. Initially, the particle dispersed randomly and uniformly. All the particles have different velocities. When the restitution coefficient is one, there is no energy dissipation in the event of collision, so nothing interesting happened. If the restitution coefficient is zero, when particles arrive, the particles will stick together and form a mass of particles. When the restitution coefficient is between zero and one, the particles will slowly approach each other, result in an even particle concentration as shown in the slide. In this simulation, the restitution coefficient was assumed 0.94. In the field of a free that bed, this type of high concentration, part concentration part is called cluster. The interaction between part and free vortices is regarded as the cause of cluster formation, but this numerical experiment suggests that inelastic collision becomes the cause of cluster formation as well. Mm. Next, we calculated the case where many particles are carried, out, carried upward in a duct. The air is flowing from bottom to top. Particles repeat in elastic collision. 
the free flight and gravitational forces are taken into account. V-shaped clusters are formed by repeated elastic collision. The long cluster begin to fold and eventually collapse. After the cluster collapses, the particles that form the cluster disperse and move upward. In time, the particles form the cluster again. This calculation was reported as a conference paper in 1993. This simulation result is very similar to the actual observation. We are surprised to be able to simulate cluster formation by considering, considering only in elastic collision. This is the end of lecture six. Thank you.